Synthetic indices are becoming popular, but you actually understand what they are. Let's start with that. Uh, synthetics are, they just copy the behavior of real market movements. They're not actually real market movements. Uh, just to take you back slightly, the word synthetic means complex. And complex, for those of you who know mathematics, means something that is imaginary. It does not exist in the real world, but copies the behavior of the real world movements, right? So that's what that's why we call them synthetic. Uh, because you cannot say that uh, volatility 75 or volatility 25 one s uh, affects an economy or uh, a certain uh, commodity depends on its movement or like that. Not like the other real world markets, like the commodities, the forex and the rest. Those are used in actually the real world transactions and the rest, right? So that's how we define uh, uh, synthetics. And then we have several uh, uh, we have several uh, types whereby if I just click control M here, you'll be able to observe that we have very many. We have the boom here. We have the volatilities. We have step index. We have uh, break. We have range and all that, right? There are very many. We have jump. We have dex now and the rest, right? So we have different types of uh, synthetics. You can clearly see these, all these things may seem very new to you if you're, what, if you're getting to double synthetics for the very first time. But also we trade them just like the way we trade real markets, right? Another difference is that here, uh, the synthetics operate 24-7, meaning that also over the weekend, you can be able to trade. It's not like uh, the normal markets where by, uh, by Friday, uh, the market is closing until the, the following week on Monday, right? So that's what we we can know about briefly about synthetics. But then also, if you're going to be consistent in trading synthetics, one thing you have to understand is that you have to trade them after doing a, a top-down analysis. That's the kind of analysis that you need to adapt if you want to trade synthetic indices. We together, I'm going to do a couple of examples, two or three, and then uh, you'll be able to practice the others on your own. Of course, the platform that we're using is MT5. Uh, many questions come in, which platform do you use? We use uh, MT5. You can set it. If you want it to appear like mine, there are just specific settings that you can uh, do to your chart. Then you can make it appear like this, right? So, uh, Without wasting time, let's start with volatility 25 1s. Uh, so you can see it also as candlesticks and the rest. So I'm going to start from the from the weekly time frame so that we can drop we can drop down with it until any type of trader. So if you're a scalper, if you're a swinger, don't uh, don't log off, don't go away, right? We're going to go to all the time frames. I'm going to explain bit by bit, right? So uh the first thing you have to do is the time frame you start with, make sure you identify the trend in which you are. So if you're to observe just quickly. Uh, we can clearly observe that we're in an uptrend here, right? Meaning that we want to look for only buys unless there's a significant or shift in structure. By shift in structure, I mean like, for example, if we have been pushing higher by creating highs, right? In the structure time frame, by, we have two structure time frames. The first structure time frame we have is the weekly time frame. The second one is the daily time frame. Are we together? Those are the two structure time frames we have. So I, by structure shift, I mean like, if the structure is giving us bullish or buying structures and then it switches to uh, selling structures. By selling structures, we have M's like this. If the market tests this neckline and starts making lows, this is a selling structure. Or if you have a head and shoulder and then it starts trending downwards, this is a selling structure. Or if you have a market that was already trending downwards and then we are retesting a previous lower low, this is a selling structure. Or if the market had created a low and it has come to test another block or this equal highs here, like this, this is a selling structure and confirms, right? This is what I mean by shift in structure from being bullish to bearish in the structure time frame. So just a reminder, we have two structure time frames, weekly and daily. So when you make sure you determine, when you're doing a top-down analysis, determine the time frame for direction, right? When you have direction, you also have to determine the structure time frame. After getting structure time frame, then you can go down to what we call the entry, the entry time frame. Are we together? So these are the things that you have to make sure that you have. Now, where are they going to, I'm not going to choose particular ones because I know I'm speaking to different types of traders. So I'm going to go through from weekly. Weekly is, we use weekly for, for swingers. We're going to go down to daily, which is for intraday. Even we shall go down to the entry time frames, which is, we have H4. And uh, we have spoken about structure time frames, which we have said we have weekly and daily. And then we, entry, we are saying that we have H4 and H1. You can go further to refining time frames. Uh, we, refining time frames, we do have min at 30. We do have uh, min at 15, even min at 5. Though I recommend stopping on min at 15, right? So I hope we have comprehensively looked at if you want to approach synthetics. So let's go into the practical bit of it without wasting time. So I'm in weekly time frame. We can clearly observe this an uptrend. Why do I say that? We are going to add, I, you have to first identify 
where did the market made the significant low and the significant high so that we can determine uh, the important levels using that. For example, yes, we have seen that this is an uptrend. Why? Because the market is making highs. But now we have to determine the high that gave us a low that we can clearly see. For example, if you to observe here, we do have this high here that was significant and then it's low here, which, which even gave us a double bottom. We have this high that came down and gave us this double bottom. So we have to identify where was it retesting? It was this level here. So that's where we're going to start our argument from, right? So I'm just going to mark this law here, right? And let me just delete this. Allow me to delete this. So I'm just going to adjust this. You can use lines. We have learned how to draw support and resistance, so you can use lines. And then also you mark the high that gave us the three test. So this is the significant level here that we have. We're together here like this. So we have marked out. This is our support. This is our resistance. So now we have broken, false breakout, false breakout. Now, we know that this high, this is just a, re a recap of marking significant levels. We have a whole video on that. You can just search on our channel. You'll be able to find it. So the market made this high and came and retested this. This is the previous side. The market made this high, higher low, went and made the high, higher low, right? So the market went and created a lower high, then came, didn't tap this level. Then again created a lower high, which came and finally tapped this level. So meaning also this level here can be significant. So let's try to see if the price actually tapped that level. So I'm just going to mark this high here. Now, when you mark, the price attempted actually to come to test it, but it did not reach there. Are we together? So meaning that this area is not tested, you can just change the color to uh, uh, to let your brain know and not forget, right? And also to be organized. Also, this one, we can clearly see the market broke above, broke down, broke up, and we never tested it. So also, you can change it to red, right? Any color of your choice. Don't just use red. Then after here, we also have other highs that the market has created. Now we can see we have a significant level that the price has now tested. Here you can see the market tapped and reacted to it. So I'm just going to take it back to our green, right? So at, because it is tested. That, so just one thing to remind ourselves is that now this one, we have turned it to green because it has been tested. And also remember we made this one green because it has been tested. Then this one's red because they have not been tested. You can see this area was broken up, broken down, broken up, but never tested. Also we have where the price, which this level is significant because it gave us a retest to this level, making it equal lows. But when the market broke above, it never tested it. So also this area is not tested. Also this one is not tested. So now we note that we have this level, this high here has been tested. So also this becomes a key area for us so you can mark it. So I am just going to mark this area with green uh, just to help us uh, determine, tell us that this area here gave us a key area, a key retest. So now we have already identified our levels that we want our price to react to. So either we can take trades from here or we can take trades from here or we can take trades from only these levels here but also remember these red levels here can act as our targets if the market becomes bearish currently we are bullish so if we break above here we know that we are going to be taking our trade from here to continue higher but if the market changes the trend maybe creates like an m and retest this area we know that we are going to be targeting this area or even this area if the price is to move further so now we have, we have identified these levels in the weekly time frame so let's just try to adjust them in uh, the daily time frame. Now, remember, weekly is for swingers. So let's try to adjust these very levels. We're not going to draw any other thing. We're just going to adjust. But before I go there, there's a level that we had not uh, uh, marked. We can mark it using... Uh, we can also mark it using red because uh, price did not uh, test it. We can just mark it using red. It can be uh, also a threat to us. If you want, you can use it. You can use, mark it using a light because it's also significant because it wasn't testing anyway. So actually, let's mark it using lines. So that you don't get confused. This is not a very key area. So I'm just going to mark using lines. I'm also mark making it red because it can also, uh, price can also react to it. So now let's go to daily and then we can observe. So you can clearly see that these same levels in daily, uh, they also acted. You can see they also acted. The same areas acted. So what we're going to do just uh, in daily, we're just going to adjust them. We're not going to draw, but we're just going to adjust them so that they suit the daily levels. Also here, I'm just going to adjust so that they suit the daily areas and they're not so big. So also, uh, we can just come back here. We just have to adjust. Actually, most of them are suiting nicely. So we have that. And also we have this area here, right? Also here, we have it's suiting just nicely. You can see the levels remain the same. So we have identified our levels in the bigger time frame. So what is left is we're looking for uh, how we can take our trade. So remember, what, what do we determine that... Uh, 
if you want to take our trade. So if you want to draw and do intraday, remember now we have a market that came and retested this area. So we're pushing higher. Always your first target is this. But alternatively, also you can mark levels inside here, which we call minor levels, right? Minor structural levels. So you can decide to say that, okay, the price came and tested this area. I can now just make it blue so that you don't get lost, right? So we're go just going to change the color to blue to determine where price started going up from. So here, the price broke this level, but it never tested it. So meaning that this can actually be your target when price can be your first target when price is to change trend. So you can see this area was not tested. Then also we have this area. Now price broke above and tested it, right? So also we do have this high here that currently price is testing, right? So if price touches this, it has now tested, though it's an improper test, and then comes and touches this area and keeps doing some. The moment it, it changes to bearish, you know that this is going to be our first target. Before even breaking here, remember daily is intraday. Right, so we have just added on these levels to identify intraday. You're not holding trades for very many days; you're holding just for a few hours, right? So when you go to H4, we shall just adjust these levels. They'll give us the levels that we're interested in. So here, I'm just going to adjust this area just to this level. Like this will be your target, the first target. Now these ones here, we're just going to be using them for change of trend. We're just going to adjust and identify. Remember, H4 is our first entry time frame, which you can use for the weekly traders, right? So we're just adjusting our levels. So which level has not been tested? We know that we have a high, higher low, high, higher low, high, higher low. This level gave us the test. So also we can mark it so that when the price breaks above, we know that uh, it's we can take our trade maybe from this level, right? We can take our trade from this level here to this level. Now, don't forget, you should put use colors that you won't forget. We know that these blue levels, are uh, we are trading them from this area to this area. So in case the market, let's say, came and closed below here, a proper close on a weekly test, we know that we're going to take our trade targeting this level here, right? So if uh, you're scalping or doing a mid a mid term or short term intraday, intraday trading, you can trade just from this level to this level. When it breaks this level, you can trade from this level to this level here. We're going to be trading level by level. That's if it breaks. But if also it closes above, on a weekly test, you can be targeting this level. When we close up, we break above again on a weekly test, you can switch back to the structure time frame, which is daily, if you're an intraday trader. If you're a weekly trader, you can wait for weekly to, to close. Are we together? So we have identified all these levels. You can see it's not so hard. It's, it's not going to be as easy as you think because as you see me doing it here, because it needs practice, right? So we are saying that if there's a structure change, remember we marked using these green levels. If the market changes and comes and breaks below, maybe and react we know that we're targeting these ones here. These are the structure. This is the, These are the levels we marked in structure. But we are saying, we're not going to wait for days or weeks before the structure shifts. We can also trade inside the structure levels. For example, by structure levels inside, we're meaning from here to here, we can trade inside what is happening here. The same thing we're doing. We're trading between here to here. That's why we have we marked these structure levels. And you can use it both to intraday and to swing because holding from up here up to down here, this is a swing trade. It can take days. It can even take a whole week. We're together. So we are just going to be doing the same thing. Uh, you wait for the market to shift trend. If it properly closes below here, because right now it's bullish. You can see this higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high. So the market has retested here. It can easily continue high. Or the moment it closes below, because I see it's failing. We have It's failing to break higher. So the moment it closes properly here, we can wait for a weak retest or a proper close with the momentum and you can take your trade targeting this level if you're doing scalping or intraday. But if... You want to hold for some time. As long as there's a proper close and with a good momentum, you can target this area here. As you wait for the structure to shift from bearish. But it can also come down here. It changes trend because remember, it will be coming down with the trend. When it changes again, it can continue higher because the structure is still bullish. So those who trade uh, uh, v 25 s you can see I've come down from the weekly time frame for swingers, also for intraday. I hope you see how it is. It's not so hard. You don't need to have a lot of things on your chart. So I have a lot of things because I wanted to show you the different types, but still you can see how organized it is. You don't need to be disorganized. So someone may be saying, I want to use H1. Yes, we have already marked our levels. Even if you switch to H1, we're also waiting. H1 also you can clearly see it's still uptrend. Higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. So we have now like a triple top that the market is trying to create, but it's still an uptrend because it has not yet changed trend. We want it to first start trending downwards before we can take our trade from here to here. We together, when we break here on a weekly test, we can trade from here to here like that. That's how you do it. So remember, uh, daily, your entry is H1. Uh, weekly, your entry is H4, 
Though personally, I prefer using H4 because it's I'm so used to it. You can use any, right? You can compare it to analysis. Now, this is one example. Let's try to go to another one. We can do V25, right? As usual, without wasting time, let's do also from the weekly time frame so that we can see how these things move. So, of course, since now also we observe that we, are, we have been going upwards, but let's use this downtrend here to, to determine which level are we targeting because up since we are going up, we need to be knowing where we are targeting, right? And also, if we're going down, we shall use this level to know where we were targeting. Are we targeting the bottom or some level down here? So it's what we're going to determine. So just follow along. It's just good for learning purposes. So we have this area here. So we're going to just draw it like this. This is the weekly level. Just going to adjust it like this. But if you're to notice, this level here was tested. So I'm not going to be interested in it right now. So I can come down to the level, the, the level that gave us the retest, which is this one here. Also, if you notice, this level here was re was tested, right? So I'm also going to mark which one tested it. It's this level here. Remember, we are identifying significant levels, like just what we did in the previous example. Also, you're going to check that we had this level being tested several times by this law here. But also, lastly, we have this level testing price. So what we are going to do is we are going to mark the one that gave us the last test, which is this one here. So, and the rest, we shall just be marking them as minor levels, right? So we have this area. You can see price also tested it. Then this one also gave us a retest here, which was tested. Then this one here also gave us a retest here, which you can see price tested. Now, I know it's not easy to determine lower lows. and You know, when someone's just telling you lower low, lower high, lower low, this is a downtrend. You think it's easy, but this is actually how the market behaves. That's why I'm saying that you have to first start by identifying these levels. This is what we call key areas. You only have to take trades from such areas. You don't have to take trades when, when the price is away from those areas because you're going to be trading in between, which is dangerous, right? Unless also you, you've marked in between just like the previous level. Uh, where we marked in daily and then you, you're using it just within the levels maybe but also it requires some bit of experience so if you know that you're not very well experienced make sure you're only taking trades from such levels that you're marking right so we're identifying the levels that were tested and which one was not tested so uh, we have that level and you can clearly see that the market that came and tested it which level was it it was clearly this level here then which level gave us this retest here we have uh this area right so this is the level that gave us the retest to this area before we broke above. So if you're to observe, uh, it, we can clearly observe that all these levels were tested besides which one. This area here, when we retested and broke above, it was never tested. So I'm just going to adjust it here like this, right? So meaning it can also act as a target. So I like using red and, other, and the blue. Those are the colors I like using. Also, this one can act as your level because when the market pushed from here, it wasn't tested. But the up one is your first target, right? In, if the market is to decide to start coming down. So this one was never tested, right? So we have our two levels. You can see the price broke above, attempted to test, but never reached. So this is a key area. Then up here, we can clearly observe that when you extend these levels here, right? You can see uh, price was was attempted to, to come towards uh, these levels because he inside here we had untested levels so remember we said we had this area that price had not tested right and then also we had uh this level here you can clearly see this area here that gave retests these are the levels that gave retests this one retested this one retested this one retested this one retested but we marked the last one eh? so we're also marking this other one so we have that level and also we have this level here i see so you can see price exactly came back to that previous untested level. So I'm just going to delete the ones that had been tested and I leave the ones that were not tested. All these ones were tested. So the only area that was not tested was this area here, this area and this one. So you can clearly see price came back and hit that target. Are we together? So we can also mark this area just slightly above because the price tested it, but and also gave a false breakout, though price has already tapped one of the areas, right? So since price has tapped this area, I can also delete it. So now from here, we expect price to be coming back down, right? So we have this area. In case price decides to continue higher, then we can be coming to this area. So also we had this level being tested and now price has slightly broken above it, uh, like an improper test. Now let's adjust this. Let's now also mark while going upwards. We're marking while coming down. We're also marking while going upwards. And we have marked this, we have marked this. So also we can clearly observe that we do have this level. You can see here the price broke above, but never tested it. So it can be one key area. 
Then also we have this area that the price broke above and attempted to sellers attempted to push price down to come and retest this area but never reached. Then again reacted, broke above, came inside, reacted. We broke above, came back, reacted. You can see it's a very key area. Even price is actually acting in it right now, right? So I'm just going to leave it. If you want, you can use slabs, but because there are many candles, I'm just going to use that. So we can clearly observe that this is also a very significant area that price has been uh, really acting in. So which area, area tested it? This one is a false breakout, false breakout, false breakout, right? So it's not a significant area, but this level of test when it broke above, we came and tested with this area here. So you can clearly observe, this is going, I'm going to turn it to blue. You can clearly observe that uh, out of all the levels, right? If I'm very fast or you're not understanding, slow down the video. Then also you can leave your questions in the comment section. Now, this is a technique you can use to trade anything that you want, whether normal markets or synthetics. But uh, make sure you do this type of breakdown. So now we have identified the targets that we shall be going to. So this one also, we can make it blue since uh, it has already tested it properly. So remember, our targets will be the red levels the moment the market breaks these areas that we're in. So uh, we are done with this area. Now, these are our key levels. If you want, now we go down to the daily time frame. Now we start adjusting our area. So when I come down, down to the daily time frame, I'm just going to adjust this area like this. Since now it was previously acting here, so the market broke down. So I'm just going to now come and adjust it just to match our area. The clearly see the market came, tested it, broke down, right? Then also, uh, when we broke down, we tested this area here. But you can clearly see now we have a market giving us... Uh, a false breakout coming touch again here. So that's why you see the market broke down and tested again, right? So again, you can see lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, equal lows here, the market broke above, meaning that this area has not been tested. So I'm just going to mark this. So this is our last area that we're interested in. Before we can, we can maybe change trend. So if the market breaks above this area here, we know that we shall be looking for buys up to this level. If the market changes trend, then we shall know that we shall be coming down. How do you know that? Because we can clearly observe that the market was coming lower, high, lower, low, lower, high, lower, low, lower, high, lower, low, lower, high, lower, low, lower, high. It made the colors and finally it broke above to change trend, right? So meaning now we are in an uptrend, but it has been so aggressive. So we have tapped this area here. The moment we can change trend, we shall be coming back down to this untested level. But if we break above on a weekly test, then we shall be targeting this area here that was not tested. Let's try to identify, was there another level up just slightly above us here that was not tested? Because that's how simple you trade. Let's mark this. Also, we have this area here, right? You can have this area that the price did not touch. If you want, you can also add this tail here, this area. So if price changes trend from here, we shall be coming back to this level. Then if we break below, we, we have the red level down there. But if we break above on a weekly test, then we are targeting this area. If again we break above on a weekly test, we are targeting this area. This is how you mark your levels very neatly, right? So even if you're to, to just check uh, here, you can see we have very few levels and it's very neat. You're not going to get confused on anything. You just keep adjusting from this level to this level, from this level to this level, from this level to this level, from here to here. When we break there, we come down, right? That's why you see we rarely do analysis every day because when you do your analysis top down, you can have a lot of levels that you can use for a very long period of time accurately. So let's check H4. So that we can check. Now, H4, you can see here. Now, we are going to mark. We're just going to change the... You can see we have this area that was not tested. I can just change it to green. So that you use it to trade your day-to-day your -day trades. Your intraday trades. Your day-to-day -day trades that you're going to take holding maybe for a few days. Or maybe uh, like that. So, so we have this area here. You can see. Remember, this was a structure time frame. We do it in a structure time frame. So the market broke and tested. Also, it gave us this area here. Are you getting it? So we're kind of trapped here. Now, someone will be saying, this is a head and shoulder. It's not at a head and shoulder. You guys know the rules of a head and shoulder. This is a, a shoulder trying to form head, yes, broke down. But we have already broken this neckline. because so this is acting as neckline. The moment we break this neckline, when we create this, then we can target this. I hope you can see how easy it is when you do a top-down analysis. Now, this is for H4, for those who, you, who want to hold for some few days or more than one day or more, more hours. But what about intraday? Intraday also is very clear. You can clearly observe when you come to H1, still higher high, higher low, but this level was never tested. You can see when the price broke here, we never tested it. It attempted to come back, but never. Then we have a higher high, higher low, higher high, 
higher low. We have equal lows here, so we shall consider the high that gave us the last three tests. Then we have higher high, but we never tested this area. We're supposed to test and then we continue higher. But instead, what did the price do? It broke downwards. It has not even touched the neckline. So you have to be careful. Now look at the noise here. That's why you see it, was, it would be difficult for you. So to avoid all such noise, wait for it. After marking those time those levels in the, in the bigger time frames, right? Then you wait for it to, to break those levels. Now, for example, if the market broke and closed properly, a proper close here, you can target this area here without panicking, right? But before it breaks here, because I know some of you are already saying this is a head and shoulder. Yes, it looks like a head and shoulder. This is a shoulder, shoulder. It looks like head, but it's not complete until the neckline is broken. You can watch the video on uh, head and shoulders, M's and W's. We explained all those rules. So from here, the market, if you trade before it properly closes below here, the market can easily continue high and create even a bigger W and continues in an uptrend, like I've explained. So this is how you do breakdown on uh, synthetics. When you start analyzing like this, everything is going to be easy. You can see, like we said, the structure time frames. You can see we're trading between this structure time frame level and this structure level, but we have levels marked in. So if the price also crosses here, we can have levels marked in here so that you can do intraday, you can scalp like, like that. Even if the market continues, you can always have inside levels so that you have your levels clear that you can use to trade. So that is it. In case you have any other synthetic indices you want us to break down, kindly share it in the comment section so that we can uh, break them down and check our social media handles that we have put in the description to check out the, the analysis. Have a great time.